Okay, technically speaking, Sea of Stars is right now actually the biggest pixel project in the making with its Kickstarter page so far gathered up to almost $2 million for the past 12 months. Now this is a turn-based RPG adventure, just like the old famous Chrono Trigger from all the way back, only with a ton of added modern twists to it. And to top it off, even composed by the same guy who also did the Chrono games. Check it out. Well, even though I've actually yet to give this one a try, River City Girls 2, which is the continuation to its predecessor in here, with not only four but six playable characters this time, it's a beat em up co-op game, one that's gathered all the hype for the past few months, it's also coming our way next year and into all consoles and PCs around summer. Check it out. I think it was only two months ago when we actually got our first look at one of the most, if not the most, stunning pixel art game that came our way after a good few years, and with a game called Replaced. What was then described as basically a cinematic action-adventure game set in a 25 1980s alternative history version of a cyberpunk dystopia. Check it out, this game is now coming to Xbox consoles and PCs only sometime next year. Okay, so we all know Loot River, or at least some of you. It's what was previously when announced described as an island shifting action roguelike game targeting, once again, Xbox consoles in addition to PCs acting as a Microsoft exclusive with another trailer. This game is actually available through a playable demo on Steam right now and due out fully sometime possibly early next year. The strongest feeling of all. It makes you happy and gives you security. A safe haven. Moving on, we have Sons of Wahala. A side-scrolling, base-building strategy game that throws you all the way back into the age of Vikings and into the role of a Viking commander. The core gameplay here consists of a lot of fast-paced battles, as you can see, mixed with real-time strategy elements, a bit in the same vein as the Kingdom 2 Crown games. But here, check it out. This game is possibly due out next year and into PCs only. Nineties inspired RPGs. Who doesn't like them? I mean, yeah, there's always somebody. But anyway, Sacrifice is just 
exactly that. It's been in the making for quite a while, it's headed to PCs and consoles next year. You can actually go ahead and support the game still through its Kickstarter campaign if you like, help them meet future goals if there's any. But anyway, as in the case, to accompany this news, I mean the console's announcement, they even came up with a new trailer. The Royce Express, where my guests indulge in luxury travel, fine dining, and mega. <gasps> then we have Locomotive. Actually, a point-and-click adventure pixel art, kind of a detective. Not, not a I'm not really sure, but pretty sure it's taken inspiration from a few really good games. Here, with a really brief and a reveal trailer pointing towards a late 2022 release and into pieces only, but also the Nintendo Switch. Check it out. To uncover. They'd better prove their innocence fast, or it's the end of the line in an adventure that's not just nuts. It's Locomotive! <laughs> Now, if you're old like me, and you know the game series that go by the Settlers, you probably have a soft spot for city building games. In that case, meet Lakeside, a cozy little classic city builder game where you can build the perfect calm town by the lakeside. Or actually something totally different. Uh, you'll see what I mean. This game's a 2D side-scrolling pixel vista, actually offering a really nice variety of elements and a pretty unique, I'd have to say. Check it out, this one's coming to PCs only, possibly to out early next year. Since the Salt Iron War ravaged the land of Norzelia, the Kingdom of Glenbrook, the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, the Holy State of Hyzant, these three nations enjoyed a brief moment of peace. So I have already said, Sea of Stars, actually the first game in this list, is at the moment the biggest pixel art project in the making. So I'd assume the second place has to go to the Triangle Strategy, a turn-based tactical RPG, one that I've tried my best to keep a really close eye on, and one that's been in the making for quite some time. But check it out, this game is due out at some point next year, and it is actually coming to the Nintendo Switch exclusively. It's a really good game. Pixel and 3D graphics meet in HD 2D. A robust visual style designed to bring this epic chronicle of war to life. Characters engage with a host of unique personalities. Out of my way! Arms master, Eridor Ballantyne. Suffer the spy, Anna Pascal. Right. Kingsguard, Hewett Butler. Victory is inevitable. Tutor, Gila Brace. Battle. Confront the enemy in complex strategic battles. Utilize the terrain and your allies' abilities to claim victory. Now! System. Immerse yourself in a deep, branching story. Bring the scales. Your choices and actions determine your conviction and affect the fate of you and your allies. Where will your convictions lead you? Flames consume you! Following up, a space for the Unbound is right now, and for quite some time, the most anticipated project out of Indonesia, or basically the entire East region. Technically speaking, I mean, if we're considering only pixel art games. Now, this is an adventure game, mostly with a few puzzle elements and a cinematic slash visual novel style kind of experience. Definitely one of a kind out of this genre. So check this out. This game is about next year and into PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PCs, and also the Nintendo Switch.
Going back to turn-based strategy games, although an adventure and an RPG at the same time, partially, we have Songs of Conquest, definitely inspired by the 90s hits, heavily I'd even say, and really not bad, I mean I quite like what I've seen so far in this game in terms of visuals, and yeah, here once again with another trailer, and a release date of early 2022, and into PCs only. Moving on, we have Lunark. Lunark is an adventure platformer with pixel art graphics. It brings back, personally speaking, a lot of memories back. I'm talking Blackthorn, Prince of Persia, flashbacks. Actually, some real good hits from all the way back almost 30 years ago. So check this out. Lunark is headed to PCs only if you're being lucky. Out and in its full form, finally early to mid next year. Now, Hype Train, as I'm speaking, is probably one of the top three developers that release indie games on a regular basis every month. We'll come to mention the latest work in the making goes by Mago, or Mago, or Majo, I don't know. A retro 2D platformer that puts you in the boots of a sorcerer who wasn't fortunate enough to eat the evil overlord's food. Yeah, <laughs> check it out, this game is targeting only PCs with the aim to come out in only a few months from now. Then there's Necro Fugitive. What's described as a brutal action platformer about the prison scape of an evil shapeshifter and in his attempt to evade the realm's justice. Let's not forget it takes place in a world inspired by late medieval ages, so it ain't no kid stuff, it actually looks quite rascal. Due out mid to late next year and into PCs via Steam. Check it out. Last but not least, by Actual Nerds, which is its developer's title by the way, the tarnishing of Yuxha, I would assume, we definitely could use a Souls-like Metroidvania as well in this list, so here it goes. The tarnishing of Yuxha is also coming to PCs only with a release date yet to be determined. <laughs> 